Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Die Rolling. I'm the ever excitable Adam. And I'm Will. Will! Will <laughs> it's just me. It's just Will and it's just me and yeah. we are going to be with just Glenn uh, from Mannequin Games for the uh, action adventure survival space horror game um, SSO. SSO. Yeah, SSO. Which I always think is single sign on. Um, oh, well, well, yeah, yeah. It could mean that. It could mean we're logging on to uh, logging online to an amazing adventure. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so the general plot here is the uh, what is the spaceship? I think the spaceship's called the Omega. The spaceship Omega. Uh, that's why it's SSO. Space... That's why it's SSO. Spaceship <laughs> Omega. There we go. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's basically drifting in space, and we are the rescue party coming in to try to figure out what happened and try and get the crew back. But we get there, there's no crew on board, oh. and one of I think five scenarios could happen to us. So we're going into this with no idea what's going to happen. Yeah. There could be an AI. There could be alien parasites. Could be. Could be anything. It could, could be me be a... being a traitor. Who knows? There is the chance that Will might be trestled, so uh, I'm <laughs> looking forward to that. So, uh, yeah, we're going to play this on Tabletop Simulator, um, so you can watch the entire gameplay session now, or you can fast-forward right to the end to mm -hmm. find out what Will and I's thoughts are. Um, so, if you explain to Will the sort of the overall principle of SSO... No, Will knows zero about this game, no, yes. which is perfect okay. because... Um, our, our watchers will also be some of these people will be new to this and others might already know of it yeah. fantastic so um basically will in sso mm -hmm. something terrible has happened to the uh, the spaceship amiga which is the the, the ship you see on yeah. the the table in front of you you we play the rescue team uh who've turned up to hopefully survive through the awful thing that killed the original crew long enough to guide the Amiga to its mission to save the world yeah. in, in one or another sort of slightly non-specified fashion. So each of these red decks at the top of the uh, table represent a different one of the uh, awful things that could happen. So mm -hmm. one of them will be from the original base set and the other four are four of the expansions oh, okay. um, that have come out so far. So they generally, there's a, there's a certain amount of sort of sci-fi survival horror tropes um, in the decks. Um, they vary from 2001 A Space Odyssey, um, a version that's a bit the thing. And as I say, the one that's just coming out on the uh, Kickstarter now is essentially uh, The Trouble of Tribbles. Oh, okay. um, but the whole the whole game has um, a, a bunch of little sort of love letters to to mm. various sort of sci-fi bits and pieces. So there, there's little references in there. So I mean, it's um, just in the locations. If if you're a, a fan of that sort of thing, yeah. yeah. If you look at the main airlock, you'll notice that the um, ah, yes. the little abandoned <laughs> spacesuit has a different coloured helmet to the body. Uh, yes. There's a little 2001 reference and. Um, the pool table in the rec room is uh, a movie called Silent Runnings, a little reference to that. Oh. And there's all there's lots of all, all through the game and, and little references on the character cards. There's, there's all sorts of bits and pieces hidden away. Um, so first thing to do during setup is part of the point of SSO is that as you get better at the game, obviously, you'll learn the decks. Um, yeah. So you pick randomly uh, which deck you're going to face at the start of the game so you can't necessarily know what's coming for you until the threat hits Yeah. so Will, do you want to pick counting from like 1 as left 5 to the right, do you want to pick a number between 1 and 5? Oh, ok, let's, let's, do, let's do 4 ok, ok now we know who to blame now Will when we yeah, die yeah, terrifying yeah, yeah. Well, that, <laughs> that's, <laughs> it. that's it <laughs> So that's our challenge deck and our set of missions. So um, basically each turn we'll flip one of the uh, challenge cards and that will be the bad thing that has happened to us uh, that turn. Okay. And the challenge cards are linked to a set of missions. Okay. So for example, one of the challenge cards might be that there are weird noises echoing through the ship, mm. which would trigger the mission to search the ship to find out what's okay. going on. 
and some of the cards and some of the missions are specific to this deck and this deck only. Yeah. Some of them are shared between the decks, so you can't always tell which deck it is that you're playing as soon as you mm. flip the first card, because some of the decks, the things that will help you in one deck are exactly the things that will kill you oh. if you do them <laughs> playing yeah. the other deck. Yeah. Um, so uh, at the start of the game, the ship's loaded with oxygen. Uh, so over here, there's the okay. oxygen count. Um, the blue count uh, counter is single units of oxygen. So yep. each crew member breathes one unit of oxygen per turn. And the red unit is, well, it counts in base six, but tens. The point yep. is that at the start of the game on basic mode, you've got six crew members. So each time you breathe, you can just move the red counter down. Yeah. Um, whereas when individuals breathe, you move the blue counter. Now, at the start of the game, so to win, uh, mm -hmm. you need to have at least one crew member alive when the red deck runs out. Okay. You lose. <laughs> well, yeah. You lose <laughs> as an individual. Um, at the start of the game, there's enough oxygen for half the crew that start the game to get to the end of it. Okay. I would strongly, strongly suggest that your reaction to that is to cooperate and work together. But uh, your reaction to that can be to quietly flush the other people out of the airlock <laughs> and go, well, there's plenty of air for me now. Yeah. Um, usually, the what usually happens in SSO is that someone does something very noble and sacrifices themselves for the team yeah. rather than that people bump each other off oh, okay. simply because it's it's very important to have a full complement of crew for as long as you can possibly manage it oh, yeah. and usually when it becomes a good idea to kill people is after they saved your life several times yes. so yeah okay so uh boop, boop, boop. the deck of green cards here on the left of which there are four cards are the um man cards so if yeah. everyone draws one of those um and from simplicity you can pop it into your little tray rather than keep right. it in your hand and we're playing so three people and we'll play on easy mode so we'll get one command crew and one normal crew so if you draw a card from the normal crew deck okay and then pick up a card uh and just keep it face down maybe sort of in front of your tray so mm -hmm. you've got two crew members that are awake at the start of the game and an operational can do stuff you've got one crew member frozen in deep cryogenic sleep mm -hmm. will wake up if and when one of your other crew members dies yeah. okay yeah. so grab the pawns that match your two crew members mm -hmm. and pop them into the central corridor They'll just be coloured. And boop, boop, boop. there's yeah. also a voting token that will match each of your crew members. So, for example, the psychiatrist has got uh, a rank of 18. Yeah. So, now oh, I'm on tiny degrees because okay. I was oh, yeah. testing. And, and there should be one to match. So the botanist is rank the lowest rank, okay. so there's one for the botanist. Yeah. Um, so that's that's all set up um, start the game. What's that read me thing to? Okay, yeah, that's just for people. Um, so, yeah. So each turn, there's a little quick reference card over on the right there. Um, there's six of them, actually. You can feel free to draw one to, to try and keep track. But basically, each turn, um, you'll get uh, activation cards that let you move through the ship. Um, then you'll have an opportunity. Then you'll have an opportunity to perform crew actions, which will be either activating bits of the ship or performing if your crew have them. So the botanist, for example, has a crew action. Um, then do do uh, we will. Flip a new challenge card, activate a new mission, vote on the mission, and start a new turn. Yeah. So, it's pretty simple. There's a, there's a, okay. there are quite a few steps. But basically, the reason for that is that the whole game's built to be quite modular and expandable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there is, there's a certain amount of rule space in the game that is basically sort of built to wait for later expansions. So basics are actually quite simple mm -hmm. so to start with um 
I will do 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 deal. Okay, so you've got two activation cards there. So the only particularly relevant rule um, in SSO at the moment is uh, when something says may, um, you can do it as much or as little as you choose to. When it says try, you've got to do it as much as you can. Um, so it tend to be the challenge cards will say try. And if it says must, you have to do the thing after the must or no part of the card activates. Okay. So, for example, you might have a card that says uh, must move to... Uh, just a minute. I... This one, for instance, must move to any um, oh. adjacent location. Well, have three. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, everyone should have three. Sorry. Oh, okay, uh, it's more to the point. Some, so some of the cards might say uh, must move to... So there's a card that says must move to the main airlock yeah. may increase oxygen by one. Okay. So if you can't move to the main airlock, you can't gain the oxygen. So I have a similar um, one, right. like, must move to the rec room, may move one other crew, not in an array with rank one plus uh, to rec rooms. Exactly. Um, so you can't move to a location that you're already in, so you can't just do donuts in the main airlock and claim that you're moving to it and gaining the oxygen. Also, uh, if you look at the various locations in the sort of top left corner area there's a little black circle with a number in it that's how many crew that location can hold so we're currently in the uh, central corridor which can hold yeah. an infinite number of crew yeah. each of the four pods the two above and two below can hold two crew each okay. rec room can hold six the two modules on the far right can hold one each uh, the main airlock can hold four the shuttle array can hold five. That's a new location that came in with Rage of Montalbano. Unless we happen to have the Rage of Montalbano deck, it's not super efficient, but we'll yeah. see if we end up finding some funny, fun way to use that. Yeah. And the solar arrays can each hold one crew. Yeah. So we will activate, when it comes to activate, in rank order. So Will, you will move all of your crew first, because the psychiatrist okay. is ranking officer. Okay. And Adam will move all of his crew. And I will move all of my crew. Okay. So if you've, we pick um, one activation card to assign to each crew member at the moment simultaneously. Yeah. Obviously, if, for example, I pick to move a crew member into a location and you fill it up, I won't be able to activate uh, my card. Okay, yeah, yeah. So there's just a minute of quickly discussing what okay. our plan is for movement. So it's the first turn, there's not a huge no. amount of pressure on. But that pressure will mount as challenge cards come yeah. out and missions get activated. Do we, uh, do we need to put morale and oxygen on our character cards? We do. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely we do. Yeah. Uh, so everybody starts with oxygen zero, mm -hmm. so that's fine. Uh, and morale f full. Uh, well, morale four. Now, okay. for some reason, I chose to represent morale with these little tokens in, in this oh, version of okay. TTS. I think when now that I'm a bit more familiar with it, I would have used one of the little digital counters, but it's a Levy. Yeah. So most crew members have a maximum morale of four uh, and a maximum oxygen of three. Um, we've got the generalist who has plus one on each of them out at the moment but yeah the psychiatrist and the botanist have got max oxygen three yeah. and max morale four so you start at maximum morale and with zero oxygen oh okay so um, the because side. yeah so i oh, okay. in in tts i'm literally just because these are infinity bags pulling out as many tokens <laughs> as the thing rather than uh, bothering okay. because just just because in in TTS it's super fiddly to try and move things around back and yeah, forth on a, on a on a slider that and whereas sense. whereas an infinity of counters is really easy in TTS because yes, you yeah. have the little in, infinity bags so just That's out of right. ease I've used I've used the power of infinity rather than the power of That's trying right. to move things accurately within <laughs> TTS yes um, so um, very so, wise, wise decision. It's a wise decision when it adds so much extra time onto games. Sometimes we're playing it through. <laughs> well, I just sometimes playing things in TTS is a bit like playing sort of at arm's length with oven gloves. I mean, <laughs> at, at, at the moment I'm um, 
because um, I, I I also design a sort of skirmish miniature. I don't know if you've heard of Gaslands. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm the developer for Gaslands, and we're play testing oh. uh, some new stuff for Gaslands. And I love TTS, but trying to play Gaslands in TTS is <laughs> mainly <laughs> because the. <laughs> Because of the locked rotation degrees, uh, it's, it's it's absolutely and whenever anything sort of everything has little invisible barriers on it, so yeah, clipping is yeah. it can, can be an absolute pain. Sometimes whenever I okay. join, I used to like just it, whenever I select something that's on top of something else, it would just grab everything, and my t the whole board would just flip over all the time. <laughs> well, we, we we've been playing um, uh, Fury of Dracula. Oh, and there's yeah, a thing yeah. in Fury of Dracula where if you do something at night, Dracula gets like the bottom card of the deck. Oh, so yeah. you, in normal life, you pick up the deck and then deal the bottom card off that deck. Oh, yes. Doing that in TTS, particularly if you've got a Mac, is, oh, is yes. yeah, almost are. literally impossible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, so we've got four morale and zero oxygen yeah. on each card. Yeah. Um, should have. Um, so uh, basically, first turn, we're going to pick one activation card to assign to each of our crew members. Yeah. So as I say, first turn, there's not a whacking amount of pressure um, on getting things done. But uh, rule of thumb is, one, you want to make sure that all the crew aren't in the same location. Yeah. Two, you want to make sure that no one's completely on their own. No. Three, it would be nice if we had two crew members in the oxygen hydropod mm -hmm. at the end of the movement phase so we can activate it for extra oxygen. Yeah. Uh, and four, uh, if anybody has a card that says... Um, if anyone has the card that says move to the main airlock, may gain one oxygen, or if anyone has the card that says move to a module, may flip a challenge card, yeah. it would be a good idea if they can get that activated. Okay. So basically, it's sort of time to have a little okay. rough chat of what you've got and what you intend to achieve. Okay. Bill, do you want to talk yeah, to us through your... sure. So I'm basically allowed... I, I can move... A few spaces. Uh, I can. I've got a card that lets me move someone with me. Uh, so what I could do is take. I, I could move someone two spaces. So if we need someone further down, I can do that into here. Or the better plan would be to get my botanist into the uh, uh, the hydropod, so that I get additional well, effects. Right. Well, the botanist's uh, ability. Mm -hmm. reduces the morale of the crew who are in the hy hydropod. He doesn't need to be in the oh, hydropod to activate that okay. ability. He's oh, basically... Uh, okay. <clears throat> basically, he's irritating everybody to oh, work harder in the hydropod. He himself <laughs> doesn't <laughs> need to be in there. Of course he is. <laughs> so he probably uh, just wants to go in the rec room um, and just get out of the way. He can, he can, the best person for him to bully is, the, is my pilot, because my pilot has mm -hmm. the right stuff, which means that he always gains a point of morale even if he's on zero morale. Oh, okay. So, so you the have perfect to move your pilot around the, and bother him. <laughs> yeah. So the, the perfect situation is if I my pilot is one of the people who goes into the hydropod, uh, and then your yes. botanist can bully him. Yes. So I will put. I'll use a card to put my pilot yeah. into the hydropod. So we're assigning I, a card for well, that. Or if you, well, I suppose that I could. Um. Oh yeah, yeah, so I could do that as well. Yeah, yeah. So if I do that, so I could basically move my guy in. To, if I wanted to, I'm going to put mine down and say I can move my guy in. Sure. So if you just pop one card next to each of your crew members, being oh, the cards true. that you're assigning okay. to them. So we all assign our cards now in okay, one phase. So I've got the phase. um. I've got the must move to any module may flip one challenge card yeah. face up. Okay. So up. so long as. Um, we'll make yeah. sure you don't occupy both modules, so that Adam yeah. can activate that. Uh, I, I've That's got, very um, well, my med bay, uh, but my guy's good with the med bay. Um, my, uh, yeah, the psychiatrist, psychiatrist in the So I should send him, probably leave him further down. Um, if you can, if you can pop the psychiatrist into the med I bay, can he can. He can repair the morale loss from the pilot that the botanist is going to cause in yeah. getting us more oxygen. Yeah, I was thinking of taking so, him there anyway, and then I could take yeah. my botanist into the oxygen. But that was my sort of plan. So I'll do that. 
Cool. And then just discard the other activation card onto the, the oh, stack okay. there. There you go. Okay, so as I say, because Will, you're the ranking officer, if you, you in any order you like, okay. reveal and uh, activate your okay. two guys. So just so, flip their movement cards. Cool. So this is just a must move to an adjacent location so yep. I can send the psychiatrist into the med bay. Brilliant. And then Good job. I can use the botanist, which is also moved to an adjacent base. So I'm moving the botanist into the hydropod. Cool. Okay. Off to do their jobs. Okay. Sure. If you just want to discard those yep. two cards onto the uh, activation card stack. So, Adam. So, um, the first officer is just going to move to any adjacent location. And I wasn't quite sure where to put them, really. Um, so, I think medical pod? Sure, yeah, you know, there's no, no bad thing. And yeah. the generalist is going to go to the computer module. Right. And that means he gets to yeah. flip the top challenge card. Oh, okay, so we have got Rage of Montalbano. It's a fairly distinctive <laughs> card to be the, the, the third card flip. This is essentially, um, um, this is essentially kind of a, a take on Wrath of Khan, right? <laughs> there's, well, the, the actor who plays um, Khan in the movie yeah. is, is Montalban. So, uh, yeah, Ra Rage of Montalban is, is a, 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 an incredibly subtle reference to, uh, yeah. to Wrath of Khan. Um, so in this deck, a uh, vengeful... Um, uh, captain who was passed over for uh, control of the Amiga is mm. trying to kill everybody and destroy the ship. <laughs> so it, this is the one that came with the uh, the deluxe expansion. So um, basically, challenge cards only ever resolve during the challenge phase. Yeah. So every challenge card that gets flipped before the challenge phase has been skipped. Mm. So we managed to skip this card, um, and it's just it's a it's a uh, unique card for the Rage of Montalbano deck that would form, yeah. start forming a new ship that's uncloaking and attacking us if it had been uh, activated. But because we've skipped it, we just know which deck we're facing. Yeah. So that's all to the good. Awesome. Okie dokie. So discard those uh, movement cards, Adam. Um, so Seven. I've got Pilot moved yeah. to adjacent location. So he's going to go into the uh, hydropod and the radio officer is going to go into the radio pod because mm -hmm. he's the radio officer. Yeah. Yeah, so. His job. <laughs> uh, so just going to pop that card that was left in your hand there. Um, Had him into the discard Thank pile. You. Okay, so uh, I'm going to run through all the steps, even the ones that aren't currently doing anything. Um, sort of just to sort of make it clear so we're now into the check phase so the first thing that happens mm. in the check phase is that automatic effects occur so for example the rec room automatically gives you extra morale if there's more than one crew member in there okay. um so the, the, there aren't any auto effects that are active at the moment nope. but auto effects happen first of all the next thing that happens is that um all crew members with morale zero that are on their own die at this point um, the pressures of the mission have become too much of them and they are no longer a, a useful asset. Uh, then we reduce oxygen supplies. So there are six people in the ship, so we reduce oxygen by six by moving the red counter down one. Okay. Then we get to perform crew actions. So again, they happen in rank order. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Will, you get to perform actions for both of your crew. Yeah. So the uh, psychiatrist and yeah. increase someone's morale by two. Okay. Um, the only person who doesn't currently have full morale is the pilot has a max morale of six because yeah. he's such a sort of confident chappy. So you can use the psychiatrist's ability to bump his morale up by two if yeah. you'd like. Yeah, why not? Let's do it. Let's, cheer Let's pep him up. Okay. And then the botanist has a choice. He can either work the hydropod himself. Yeah. Uh, so the hydropod puts in one point of oxygen for every two crew members that are in there. So that would be yeah. one point of oxygen. Yeah. Or he can use his special ability to depress the pilot and nag him into working. Yeah, yeah, and 
spend the pilot's morale in a one-for-one -for, -one for extra oxygen. I can see this botanist being a really lazy person just wanting other people to do work. <laughs> so he's just going to force the pilot into doing it. Yep. He's just going to sit on a chair with his feet up. Going, oh, yeah, thanks, thanks man. Yep. Doing the um, so you want to... You can... The thing about the pilot is, because his auto ability yeah. is to get morale back, yeah. he's almost impossible to depress. Mm -hmm. So you can literally take all of yeah. his morale off yes. with your ability. Oops, I just deleted the, the... pilot <laughs> he's card. Gone now. <laughs> um, so is there that is. Uh, there's a rewind time, isn't there? Uh, oh. Sorry. That's fine. There Here we go. Back. All right, he's back again. So I'll not delete the tokens this time. I'll just move them off the card. Yeah. You probably need them again. Yeah. So doop -a -doop. six morale off for the pilot, which creates the six oxygen that we lost by breathing back again. So that's nice. great. Um, so that's your uh, two crews actions. So the first officer can actually increase the generalist's morale by one because the generalist also has extra morale available. Uh, the generalist can, if he's so inclined, flip a location face down. There's no sane reason to do it unless you want to openly start murdering your friends right off the bat. <laughs> I do have this um, the show me crew changes crew action to that one other living crew. So yeah. does that yeah. mean I could, I could copy somebody else's so, for example, you could be, you could make your ability the botanist's ability, for example, um, mm. and get us more oxygen. Although we're maxed out on oxygen yeah. now because put it back. Uh, you could take the first officer's ability, but uh, that'd be quite premature because we've got no missions active. Yeah. Um, and those, so yes, yeah, so you can either copy the botanist or the first officer. The only no, person you might want to copy is the botanist, but at the moment we're maxed out on oxygen, so uh, it would be a bit sort the of... the generalist on his... And can he copy the pilot's one? Yeah, his, his special ability is can copy anybody's, like, crew ability. But I think yeah. the generalist is just going to chill out in the command module yeah. for the moment. Sure. Well, he can't copy he the pilot's because the pilot's ability isn't a crew uh, ability. Oh, okay. okay. Also, oh, yes, yeah, okay. Cool. Yeah, the, the only the only two people with crew abilities in this particular set are the botanist yeah. and the first officer. Yeah. So yeah, so the generalist really can just chill. The pilot was going to produce more oxygen, but it's pointless because we're maxed out, yeah. and the radio officer hasn't got anything to do because they haven't got a mission yeah. running. So that's the check phase. So we would now check to see if the missions were active, fail, or succeed. There aren't any, so that's all good. Um, so we're now into the challenge phase. Mm -hmm. So super quickly, at this point, uh, pods that don't have ray, um, solar rays attached flip down, killing the people who are inside them, but we're all good because mm -hmm. the arrays are all up. Uh, all the mission guides count down. Um, then we check to see if we've won. We haven't yet. Check to see if we've <laughs> lost. We haven't yet. Then we flip the next challenge card. Then we resolve the next challenge card. So we've got uh, strike. Try to flip a randomly determined solar ray and one adjacent or attached location face down. Ooh. So somebody is uh, shooting at the ship and they're about to smash out one of these four solar arrays and either the solar array next to it or the pod attached to it. Um, so in SSO, uh, randomization is done with a coin flip. Okay. If you look at the locations, you'll see in the top right corner, there's heads, well, HT or HH oh, or yeah. TH or TT yeah. for tails heads. Oh, yeah. So it, we'll flip the coin. Heads yeah. are the top two lo uh, solar rays. Tails are the bottom two solar yeah. rays. So who wants to flip the coin? I think oh. it's... <laughs> okay, I will flip the coin. If it's, if it's heads... No, don't not, literally not... flip it. Oh, yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah, you 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 uh you are it, don't Roll. you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Go. yeah. So yeah. so tip, tap, tap R on it a few times. So tails. It's one of the okay, bottom cool. two solar rays. So flip it again. Tap R on it a few times. It is heads. So oh, that okay. is that solar array. So we may as well. Obviously, we don't want to flip this one because that would lose the. Yeah. 
uh, medical pod that people are in, so we'll lose the cryopod. Oh, everyone that was asleep uh, is gone. <laughs> yeah, well, luckily the, the deep cryo uh, <laughs> suspension that your spare crew member in is not... This is the temporary cryo suspension. Uh, okay. so they're, 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 they're fine. It's just if anybody had been in there... So you can put your crew members in there and they don't take up oxygen and they don't lose morale. Uh, okay. um, but they need somebody else to unfreeze them. Yes. Um, but anyway, that's gone. So something... Might have been a meteor strike. We don't know yet. There's, yeah. there's not an uncloaking ship. So that's going to activate mission four. Okay. So mission four is to go out and check the solar arrays because the solar array has just been smashed out. Yeah. Right? It's great. In order to complete it, we need to have one crew member in each solar array. So at the moment, there are three solar arrays. Mm -hmm. So to do that, we would need to load up three crew members on at least one point of oxygen each, mm -hmm. get them to the main airlock, they can go out the main airlock to the arrays, spend a turn in the arrays, and that would complete that mission. Okay? Okay. If we complete it, we would get to flip two more challenge cards as a reward. Yeah. We now have a choice. We mm -hmm. either vote to try and complete it, or we vote to turn it down. If we turn it down, it flips face down because so it could reactivate again later and everybody oh. loses one morale because something's come up and we haven't bothered trying to achieve a plan yeah. to deal with it. If we attempt it and succeed, we flip two challenge cards. If we attempt it and fail, another solar array goes down mm. because we're not properly maintaining them. So to vote, we each pick uh, to put each of the uh, rank tokens that are currently attached to our cards into oh, yeah. so in real life you put left hand for no and right hand for yes yeah uh then we would all reveal the rank tokens we would add up the totals and whichever total is yeah. higher is which way we're going so a higher ranking officer can outvote a lower ranking officer because okay. this is like a first game um and i think for the best that everyone like plays totally cooperatively yeah we'll talk through the plan and then we'll say what we're all voting um, so that no one's yeah. going to sort of go against the plan. Yeah. So what do people think? Do you think we should attempt that mission or or not? Do you th what, what, what are opinions? Well, I think there's only three of them to do, right? Yeah. So there's less, less work this time. Yeah. Yep, because... one's been smashed down. And we've also got people right next to them so oh, no i oh, will we've got to go to the airlock yeah you can't oh. you can't just smash your way through the side of the ship <laughs> that so would be really really unfortunate yeah so um so with the missions themselves um there's a time limit on this right that's is, is yep. that right yep yep so there are basically at the bottom there's a mission guide so you see the yeah. fail conditions on the left yeah mission guide equals zero that means that you have four turns of the mission guide counting down oh. before it will fail itself that's that's the question there right do we think we can get one person in each of those so three people outside yeah. with four turns well yeah. we need to have someone so, move twice to get to the oxygen well, it, it, de it depends on what activate because oh. there's an activation card that moves you automatically to the, oh, to the space. Uh, airlock there's one that is moved to any location. There's uh, one that's moved to the location okay. of a higher ranked oh, okay. officer. So it's not too bad then. Yeah, the issue is that you need oxygen to go outside the ship yes. for, you know, obvious reasons. Yeah. Um, there are only two places you can get oxygen. One is by spending a crew oxygen within the hydropod, yeah. where you get oxygen on a one for one basis. The other one is to spend a crew action in the airlock, but it's less efficient, so there you get personal oxygen on a two-for-one yeah. basis. So if we pile three people into the airlock this turn yeah. and just pay the oxygen for a turn, yeah. we could then do the mission next yes. turn, or we could take like three turns to do it by being a bit more sparing with our oxygen supply. Um, but the point is, do we think we want to take that mission on at the moment or do we want to leave it for later? Well, if we can get it over and done with, I can see us doing it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm game. Why not? Let's, let's, okay, let's so it. Let's it. if these psychiatrist and the first officer vote for it, that's 36. The radio officer goes in as well. 
That's 40. Is that... No, actually, because the pilot and the radio officer generalist and the botanist still don't outrank the first officer and the psychiatrist. So if just the psychiatrist and the first officer vote yes, that's enough to carry the mission. So, uh, Will, when you vote for a mission, yeah. your rank token goes on to that mission. Okay, cool. That character can't vote for another mission until the one they voted for uh, is completed okay. or they use the radio pod to reclaim their rank token yeah. in the event that that mission fails oh. anyone who voted for it loses an extra point of morale because okay. something that they thought was a good idea went badly so they feel bad uh, about it okay, yeah. and it also means if you have no rank tokens available you can't vote for additional missions and those missions auto flip down so you ah, automatically lose morale okay. every time they come up so even if you're all in accordance and you all think it's a good idea you still need to try and make sure it's voted through as efficiently as possible okay that makes sense uh, so that's missions voted so we're back to the activation phase so that's that's a full turn of SSO okay. basically awesome. we do that until either the challenge deck is gone through or everyone's dead whichever happens first <laughs> So we will deal one, two, three activation cards. So this time we've got a bit of an actual uh, active mission. Because uh, we're trying to get people into the airlock. So I can get someone into the airlock if one of the higher rank crew members moves there before me. Um, Perfect, because I have, um, I've got a card which says must move to make, uh, main airlock and may gain one person oxygen. So if I play out on the first officer, oh. then you'll be able to teleport there, right? right. Yep, I and have... then oh, sorry, the off. radio officer, co officer will be able to follow you in on that. Mm, yeah. Okay. And we get a third crew member into the main airlock. Yeah, yeah. now I have um, two cards, one that will let me move to any non-array location. And then okay. another one which will let me move to any pod, um, or any pod, and then perform a crew action uh, that's marked sure. on it. So, but I don't think uh, no, well, the there is a pod that is useful for that. But I can move to a location. But it, it may be yeah. printed. But it leaves me to move to locations. And then I've got to, and then I've got to. Uh, must move to any module and then may flip one challenge card face up. Okay, so you, you've got a great. So put the move to any non array location on the person you yeah. want to go outside the ship. Yes. And the other one take the move to any module because that's a free challenge card. Yeah. Now the move, move outside, like I can't really use because no one's got any oxygen yet. Um, yeah, so uh, you can't move outside. Um, with the cards you've currently got, yes, just to yeah, say, yeah. none of none of the standard cards let you move to the arrays outside the oh, ship. Okay, yeah. The main airlock has a special rule, which mm -hmm. is all activation cards there can be treated as moved to any array. Uh, okay. It's just it's a little mechanical thing where, you know, you can't leave the ship other than by going outside of the airlock okay. because. You know, it's the spaceship, and if you just punch yeah. through a window, <laughs> yeah. that ends really badly yeah, for yeah, everybody. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, so you've got one. You've got a guy going to the to the airlock. I, uh, Adam's got a guy going to the airlock. I've got a guy going to the airlock. That's three people yeah. into the airlock, which is what we'll need to complete the mission next turn. Yeah, you've got someone do going. To... To... Sorry, and do we have to move people um, out of where they currently are? Do they always have to move? Oh, so you can... ask. It's because the journalist is currently in the computer module, and if I stayed in there, I could flip one white location up would mean i could get the uh, medical bay back right well um a yes you can but um locations uh pods without uh ah. arrays flip face down again okay so Ignore it would that. flip back down again the, the what you can do if you really need a location the command module skips challenge step one which is the step during which pods flip face down because of arrays being lost so if you really, really need location, you can have one guy in the command module hacking the power routes and one person flipping the location face up, and you can keep it running. But it's quite resource intensive. So at the moment, it's it's not particularly useful flipping 
the, the it back up again. But in reference to the first question, yes, you can leave your activation card face down. And if you cannot activate an activation card, you have to leave it face down. Okay. This is because in instances where betrayal starts creeping in, we're not going to be playing that way today. Yeah. It's convenient to say, oh, I'm sorry, I can't get to that location to help you. I don't have the right card and leave it face down and then discard it face down. And nobody knows that you've betrayed your friends horribly. Um, so, you, yes. That's you normally, can... how, um, normally how Will plays games is uh, as backstabbing as possible. Oh. So it's quite it's... refreshing to not have to worry about you... this. <laughs> you can't... You... I, I was, it, the thing about SSO is that the game is already coming for you. So if you turn on your friends as well, the game will just rip you to shreds. Oh, yeah. um, if you're going to betray your friends, you need to have a really good sense of the deck, know when the threat has passed, yeah. and know when the most important thing is the fact that you're all about to suffocate. <laughs> and it's, um, Have you ever seen the, uh, the film uh, Sunlight by uh, Danny Boyle? Um, yeah, sunshine. Sunshine. Sorry, mm -hmm. sorry. Sunshine. There's a bit in that where, so in the film, the mathematician sort of makes a miscalculation, which kills the captain, and he's horribly depressed and like wants to kill himself, and they keep him sedated. There's a bit in that where they're having a conversation where they realise that there's enough oxygen to complete the mission, but only if they have one fewer people breathing, and they're like, "Well, should we just stop sedating the mathematician and see what happens?" And that conversation is kind of what SSO is based on. The moment when there's quite often in the game, you'll look at the oxygen, how many cards you've got left in the challenge deck and realize only a certain number of you can make it. And somebody has to do the noble thing and give up their opportunity to win so that their friends can make it or become an absolute scumbag and try and murder everybody so that they make it and nobody else does. Um, but personally, my favorite moments are when someone does the noble thing rather than try to, to murder everybody but it's very much a personal choice cool. right <laughs> so uh will if you want to yeah. flip and resolve your cards yeah so i have uh moved to any non-array location for psychiatrists and he's gonna go in yep. yeah Oop. you and then and the i have uh must move to any pod, may perform one crew action there. Oh, I thought, I thought you had to oh. move to a module. Oh, move, I did have a move to a module. Oh, does that... Um, well, so the move to the module card was the one you wanted. Oh, okay. I was I'll, it, but never mind. I I'll, just... I'm willing to take your word for it. Yeah. I can't imagine, you know... That's fine. I, I missed... did it. That's fine. <laughs> um, no problem. Let me have a look. Okay. <laughs> Well. Uh, so it'd be the top three cards would be the ones that were discarded. So oh, there you go. There. That's the one. That's it's the one that, that, it's that one. That's the one I meant. Sure. There you go. Right. So that's what I meant. Okay. And we're going to move the box. So it has to be. So it has to be to the command module because it's yes. the only one that's free. Yeah. And that will flip a challenge card. That's another bit of uh, yeah. Montalbano ship skipped. That's handy. Uh, so you discard those movement cards yeah. and Adam. If you want to do yours. The first officer is going to move to the main airlock, or she, and uh, gain a personal oxygen. Brilliant. So that's free oxygen. So just pop that right on. Brilliant. Okay. Is it three lots of oxygen uh, they get? It's, or it's, one? it's no, it's one. It's one, it's but one. it's free. It, free with an it's F. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Free Wrong. It doesn't. It doesn't come out of the general supply because it's a little uh, okay. reward for for coordinating your movement around the ship. Yeah. Then I just got the generals to move to an adjacent location. Sure. Yeah. It's a good idea to move him out just in case uh, somebody gets the move to a module card again. It means that we can still use it. Uh, so the pilot is going to move into the radio pod. There's not a lot of point at him staying in the. Hydropod because you can't work it on your own. And the radio officer is going to move into the main airlock and give a snappy salute to a higher ranking officer. <laughs> um, so he could increase the morale of a higher ranking officer, but you're both on full morale, so yeah. that doesn't do anything. Uh, okay, so that's the movement phase. Again, the automatic effects aren't going to kick in. The generalist is on his own in the uh, rec room, and that isn't particularly enjoyable for him so he doesn't get any 
morale. He needs at least one person, other person. The pilot does get a point of morale because his right stuff kicks in because he's got zero morale and he's on his own. So that's one or two effect. Yeah. Uh, so no one's on their own with morale zero. We reduce oxygen by six because everybody's still in the ship and they're breathing. Then we perform crew actions. So psychiatrist yeah. presumably wants to use the airlock to pick up a point of oxygen yes. at least one point of oxygen i would think yes now it's up to you how much he loads up on it's on a two for one basis so mm -hmm. generally it's very inefficient doing it with the airlock do you want to just take the one well just as long as it's enough to get to the array and back that's all i need so one one is exactly enough then to I'll, get to the array and back. Take, if if the absolutely one. nothing goes wrong yeah, while we're out. Well, there. I'll just take the one. I'm sure nothing will go wrong. Brilliant. Uh, so down one, two on the blue, and every time you go past the zero on the blue, you move the red down yeah. one. Fantastic. Uh, so the botanist doesn't actually have anything particularly handy to do. He can order somebody around into an adjacent location, mm. but. That's not going to, I think, super help anybody. The first officer already has a point of oxygen because of the activation card. Does he want to snaffle another one? I don't think he's okay. Um, I've got a question about his special crew ability. It says, must flip two missions face down. So, um, the missions have failure um, punishments if you fail them. Yeah. So, uh, as a crew action, the first officer can flip two missions face down. So, if a mission's about to fail, he can flip them down so you won't suffer the punishment effect, but he has to do two missions at a time. So, if one's about to fail, he has to shut down two missions, so it's not just a free, out-of-jail-free card if a mission's going badly. So, if an important mission's about to go badly and punish you, he can shut down another mission along with the one that's going pear-shaped, and save everyone from the punishment effect, basically. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you, can, you can only do it if there are two missions running, because it's a must ability. And yeah. you can only do it if he flips two missions, because, again, it's a must ability. Okay, perfect. Okay. So, yeah, I think, um, I think at this point, the first officer is quite happy to just, um, you know, he doesn't want to look too selfish, so he's going to just stay in there with a the one. And the generalist, um, yeah, he's just going to chill out, I imagine. Play some shuggy. Uh, <laughs> So the radio officer is going to pick up a point of oxygen uh, in the airlock, and the pilot is just going to sit there. Um, oh, we don't have a... Put a blip on for the mission count. Just noticed I haven't put in tokens for a mission count yes, uh, on the TTS. Okay, okay. okay. So, so the crew actions. So mission doesn't fail because you haven't reached zero. Mission doesn't succeed because we're not in the airlocks. Uh, the mission count goes down by one, uh, and we haven't won, we haven't lost. Hit the next challenge card. Ha! And resolve the next challenge card. So, challenge card you have to resolve is the torpedo array. Uh, so, it's a permanent card. We place this somewhere that is uh, adjacent to all other cards that are active like this. So, this has a new auto effect where if no crew members are here, we have to flip face down a randomly determined yellow location. So it's a randomly determined array. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, it activates mission five. So mission five is battle stations. Um, you succeed if no auto actions were activated this turn. So we will succeed if somebody is on the enemy ship in the torpedo array, because that's what stops that auto action activating mm -hmm. right uh the success is that we get to flip six challenge cards discard that <laughs> torpedo array location um whoever's there gets beamed back to the ship we have six turns to do it in uh if we fail we would lose a uh, location because we would have to activate the auto ability on the torpedo <laughs> array um so in order to be able to do uh that we would have someone has to go into the shuttle and use the shuttle arrays auto action to move over to the torpedo array um so that wouldn't activate this turn because we would have activated the auto action and it would activate next turn obviously if we don't do it and we go out into the uh solar arrays the torpedo array is going to blast out one of the solar arrays while one of our crew is in it and they'll die <laughs> um okay 
And if I we don't... It sounds like we're going to have to do it. <laughs> so we can do the other one properly without being obliterated. So does the, the pilot want to vote for that? Uh, so if we if we're going for it, okay, the pilot will vote for it. Got six turns to do that one in. Okay, so now obviously the, the, new, the new card has kind of trodden on the feet of the realigned solar rays. <laughs> so now um, each turn, uh, if the solar race isn't completed within three more turns and it fails. We lose a solar array through not completing that mission. Okay. Right. So somebody has to get into the oh, shuttle array, board Montalbano ship, shut down the torpedo array, get teleported back over, then we've got to go out of the airlock into the arrays in order to check them out to complete the other mission. Okay? Yeah. There's a question. Uh, if all the arrays get blown up by the torpedoes, we won't have to realign them, will we? Because they'll all be destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on the realigned solar rays, it says succeed, crew in every solar ray, minimum one. Oh, okay, so we have to fix so one. you have to have at least one solar array running for it to count. Oh, um, because okay. a little um, thing, it, it, the computer module lets you flip locations down. Hmm. So as a little efficiency thing, you can actually use the computer module to intentionally shut down oh. solar arrays to go out there. Um, so the idea, like background wise, obviously if you if you shut them down, they're a little bit easy to do maintenance on. Yeah. So it's uh -huh. it's it's actually a little efficiency thing. You can actually a little emergent uh, uh, tactic okay. is you can act actively shut them down, but you can't just shut them all down and yeah. go. Well, there you go. I've got a crew in all yeah. the array. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okie dokie. Okay. So back to the activation. Oh, sorry, I just drew a card rather than dealing it. No problem. So, deal. 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 Okay, so who is the brave person who can get to the shuttle array? Uh, I can get the radio officer into the shuttle array. However, mm -hmm. the radio officer's ability is to double the rewards of one completed mission once per game. Okay. So if we can, could coordinate it, so the radio officer is in the radio pod when we complete uh, battle stations, we'll mash through a full 12 cards of the... Well, that sounds, oh, that sounds, like, that a sounds, sounds like a good plan. Which, plan. which is huge. I'm happy for the first officer to go into the adjacent location and get into that, that shuttlecraft. I can then use, um, I've got the must move to main airlock, may gain one personal oxygen card again, so I could get the generalist to jump over into the main airlock to then go out when we need him to go out. Fantastic. That's... I've got... So... Yeah, so I've got... That's guys? Yeah. Yep, yep. I might... Well, the radio officer is going to go into the radio pod, so yeah. he can report back on the, uh, the boarding action, and yeah. we can all gain mighty glory because of that. Yeah. Um... The pilot can go into a pod. I, I could move the botanist mm. to, I suppose, the computer module to reduce, turn off one of the arrays. We only have to fix two. Get it all done um, this round. I mean, we don't want to do the arrays this round because one of the arrays is has a chance of getting... Oh, no, if, if the first officer is going out this turn... Yeah. Then, do, 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 do. yeah, then then we'll be okay because he'll be in the torpedo array yeah. and the arrays won't get destroyed. Yeah. So yeah, if you shut down one of the solar arrays, yeah. we can complete both missions this turn. Yeah. I'll if you're that. feeling we'll give it okay. A go. So I could do that. So make sure he's the right one. That's that goes there. That's the right one. And I can move the other one just to the location. And then that can just be the stars. Perfect. Okay, this sounds like uh, we're going to incredibly carefully and smartly coordinatingly yes. crush it. So let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Will. Okay, so 
Uh, I'm going to start by he can, uh, the psychiatrist can move to any adjacent location. So he can do it by but use the activation of cards and could go to any um, array. So, yep. So, so he can use the uh, main airlock's ability to treat that card as reading move to any array. Yeah, so. so does it really matter if I go? You know, what, it does. Both heads, it, or I could turn off the one it tails. It should. And then if we get tails, it shouldn't. It shouldn't matter. super matter because okay. we're shutting down one of the arrays, sure. so it'll be 50-50. Sure, I'll just go back. Whichever one you go to, if we get a if we get a strike on it. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, and the botanist is. Um, and then the botanist, sorry, is going to the other module. So he's going yep. across to the computer module, and then in the crew in. turn, he's going to flip over one of the arrays. Fantastic. So you can uh, discard those cards. Yeah. Adam? Um, so, yeah, uh, the first officer is moving into an adjacent location. He's boarding the shuttle craft. And then um, the generalist is jumping into the main airlock and also gaining a personal oxygen, just, just in case. Okay, so we're not going to be able to do the arrays this turn if the radio officer is going to go into the radio pod to claim the double reward from the, uh, the torpedoes. Oh, I was thinking yeah. of just moving to any ray, you can just go straight over to the... I think, yeah, we, we need to get that, we need to get the radio operator into radio shack, yeah. as it were. <laughs> but yeah, because the, the first officer is uh, going to yeah. go over to the torpedo ray, the radio officer is going to go into the radio pod okay. to be able to use... Sorry, did I, did I do the wrong thing, guys? Should I have gone to the... the, the um... No, 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 you, you did the right thing. We just missed the fact that yeah. there wasn't going to be somebody with oxygen right. in the yeah. main airlock yeah, 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 yeah. at the right moment. Yeah, yeah. We just we just made a minor miscalculation in our um in our plan. Right? As is as is want to happen. We we it will be fine, I should think. Uh, <laughs> so the pilot's gonna uh sticking where he is. Right. There we go. Uh, so, yeah, that's activation. So, automatic effects. So, the automatic effect of the shuttle array is if crew here, there is a crew trying to move this location to touch uh, a location. So, the location we're going to choose to have it touch is the torpedo array. Mm -hmm. Then, try to move crew here to adjacent. And so, the first officer is going to go into the torpedo array. So, we check the torpedo array's ability if no crew here, but there are crew here, so that doesn't happen, which is great. Um, mm -hmm. So that's all the auto abilities. Uh, there's no crew morale zero on their own. Reduce oxygen supplies. So you still count as being in the ship when you're over in Montalbano ship. Um, uh, but I, I so we lose six. So Everyone I... inside the ship. Oh no, we only reduce oxygen by doop, five. One, two, three, four, five. Because somebody's outside the ship. Yeah. So the psychiatrist has to breathe that point of personal oxygen yeah. that he's got on. So crew actions. Uh, the psychiatrist um, can, if he wants to, repair the array that's down oh, because cool. he's. <laughs> do you want? Do you want him to do that? Um, no. 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 Okay. <laughs> well, okay. No, not yet. Apparently. Okay. So uh, the botanist can flip locate flip down any location of his choice. Does he want to do that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You're gonna flip, uh, flip this one. That array. Okay. Um, so the. Yep. So the first officer um, is out there um, in the enemy ship, so he's not got any crew actions that he can perform. Mm -hmm. uh, and the pilot is going to use the radio pod to radio back for extra time on the realigned solar arrays. Um, and the radio officer's not going to do anything because we've got full time on battle stations. Uh, so, uh, yep, so check to see if any missions fail. No missions fail, because none of them are counted out. Check to see if they succeed. Solar Rays doesn't succeed, because we haven't got one person in each Solar Array. Battle Stations doesn't succeed, because an auto-activation activated this turn, namely the one on the Shuttle Array. 
Okay. Um, but if the first officer stays out there next turn, then we'll uh, be able to complete that mission. Amazing. Uh, so the hydropod flips face down through having its uh, solar ray sh uh, shut down. Mm -hmm. Each of the mission counts drop one because uh, time's passing on them. Uh, then we flip and resolve the next challenge card, which is try to flip a randomly determined solar array face down. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Bill, do you want to sure. uh, flip the coin? No, I will flip the coin. They're not that. Uh, oh, that is failed. Oh. So. That solar ray flips face down. The psychiatrist is killed. He's got off space. <laughs> that is brutal. He's gone into, he's gone, everyone, he's gone into space now. Everyone loses a point of morale as they uh... see the psychiatrist just mashed into paste by a meteor smashing the solar ray <laughs> uh... into oblivion. All he was doing was just trying to help. But... Uh, Will, you get to unfreeze your new oh, crew yes. member. This is... Who is the spacewalk specialist, which oh. is nice. The uh, doo -doo -doo. There he is. So, uh... Oh, that's weird. I thought it said the spacewalk specialist. That's an age engineer. Oh. <laughs> right, there's the engineer. So, uh, when you're unfrozen, you start with zero oxygen, as everybody, new, every new crew member does. You also start with zero morale, because having been unfrozen, because somebody's been horribly killed is kind of depressing okay. um so you get to place the engineer wherever you want bear in mind that if you're on your own with zero morale you uh, uh cease to be a mission asset probably, so you want to pick somewhere in the main airlock yeah he wants to buddy up until we can get him some extra yeah extra morale yeah uh do 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 Yep, so there we go. That's the that's the death phase. Everyone's lost a point of morale. We've unfrozen a new crew member. Yeah. Uh, that would activate mission four. Mission four's already activated, so we don't activate a new mission. Yeah. And we go back to a new activation phase. So deal, deal, deal. And uh, Will needs the pilot's um, rank token, oh, right? Yes, yeah. Oh, the engineers, what is that? Yeah, Eight? Eleven. Eleven. Sorry, yeah. Where... Where do we put the rank tokens? Ah, I think I might have uh, accidentally deleted the rank tokens. Uh, for now, let's uh, have him use the psychiatrists and just remember that that 18 is an 11. Sorry, that's my yeah. fault. I got a bit of head of myself and deleted all the rank tokens oh. of the unused crew. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, do, do, do. Yep, so we're back to the activation phase. So, bearing in mind that the medical pod will flip face down at the start of the challenge phase, and anyone in there will therefore yeah. be killed. Um, it's now pretty easy to achieve the realigned solar arrays mission. Well, that, that's true. Um... Hopefully another, it's... hopefully another meteor doesn't hit. Well, the generalist can go outside and complete that, but we want to ideally make well, sure that somebody is around to keep an eye on the engineer. I can get both the botanist and the engineer into the rec room and boost them around. Okie dokie. Brilliant. Yeah. So if you, if they, if you move the, those guys into the rec room, that'll keep the engineer... Uh, active. Yeah. I'm obviously going to leave the radio officer in the radio pod because we should be completing uh, battle stations this turn and we want his ability to double that up. Um, the pilot um, can't move anywhere particularly useful at the moment. So the pilot's going to stay where he is and the radio officer's going to stay where he is. And uh, my guy's just staying where he is, the first officer, and the other guy is going outside. Nice. Okie dokie, brilliant. We know how well that went last So, time. <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> how many meteors can there really be? <laughs> so, uh, uh, Will? Alright, so I'm going to start with the engineer. And he's going to 
move uh, into any non-array location. So he's going to. Oh, quick, quick oh, question. Okay. Um, yeah. Would um would Will be the first player now that he hasn't got the highest rank? Oh no. Oh no. yes, yes, yes. He he wouldn't. You're you're quite right. First player is now Adam because okay. the first officer yes. is the ranking officer. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, so it's no, 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 no. It's it's just get the order right. <laughs> yeah, no, no. You you you're quite right, and it is important because obviously. Um, if locations become full or empty, uh, it can make a real difference. Mm -hmm. As I say, my guy, it so happens my guys are staying still and most yeah. of the guys are staying still. And then but, mine yeah. are doing uh, the movement, so the engineer is going to rec room, Bent. and then uh, the botanist is moving to the adjacent location. Oh. Ah, there is an issue um, you may want to reconsider. Um, remember, the thing for completing battle stations is no auto actions activated this turn. Oh, yeah. Uh, the rec room is an auto uh, action. Okay. Somewhere else, then. But, so, um, well, there you is... Well, any other room, so I could move... You... Uh, because I've already gone, I could have... The thing is, um... It so happens is you can't go into the module because that's maximum crew one, yeah. and you can't go into the pod because that's maximum crew two. Yeah. Um, but mm -hmm. uh, in reference to, uh, as I say, you can leave cards face down if you're not moving. There is an alternative rule, which is you can discard two face down cards to move one of the crew of a face down card to the location the other crew of a face down card. And that's always available all through the game. It it comes up when you're starting to lose locations and crew members, oh, so you can okay. still coordinate yourself. So you can use that rule to move the botanist automatically to the location of the engineer. You won't get morale yeah. back, but the engineer will have someone keeping an eye on him. That's probably the um, probably the best thing. So he goes over to here. Yeah, it's worth it because then we get to complete that this mission, yeah, and then not they through 12 cards, yeah. Yeah, that makes get the first officer sense. back. So that that is the that is the better option. We'll do that uh, then. Brilliant. Uh, and you just chuck out that uh, yeah. oh, last activation card that's in your hand. So, oh yes, yes. So no automatic effects occur. Yeah. Important. There are no crew morale zero on their own. Uh, so we reduce oxygen by uh, one, two, three, four, five because there's five people breathing in the ship. The general generalist reduces his personal oxygen by one. Mm -hmm. We get to perform crew actions, which in this particular case, I think is just the radio officer and the pilot bumping up the mission counts, yeah. just in case. Um, there's no particular use, I think, to anybody no. else's reactions. Uh, so, missions fail. Neither missions fail. Missions succeed. Realign solo arrays. There are on crew member is a crew in every solo array right yeah. That's actually, so yeah. uh, the first officer gets his rank token back oh. you get to flip two challenge cards and that mission's removed from the game because it's been completed in battle stations no auto actions have activated this turn because a brave first officer has spent a couple of turns now fighting yeah. off the uh Boarding action over on the other ship. So we complete battle stations, which allows us to flip six challenge cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, and the radio officer that. is uh, during the check phase step at six once per game, once per mission, when the radio pod repeat a mission card's reward. So the radio officers can use this once per game ability to go one. Two, three, four, five, six. Uh, the next part of the uh, reward for battle stations is discard any number of face up permanent challenge cards. So we will discard the torpedo array. Mm -hmm. The first officer has bravely uh, detonated a bomb or something, and the first officer it's to move to any other location of his choice. He can either move into the shuttle array and pile it back to the ship, or he can just um, get a little teleport ride straight back over. It's up to you. Hmm, I think... What do you think, guys? If the shuttle array's over here, can we still access it from the airlock? No. So we've. It's, it's, a, it's basically a choice of... Um, 
do you want to pilot it back in case we get another um if one of those last four cards is another ship lo uh Montalbano ship location it's good to have the array to go back over there and and board yeah, it to keep it from killing us or if you reckon eh, there's only four cards left it might be handy to have you aboard the ship oh, my, my first officer is by the books so i think uh i think she'd fly <laughs> back yeah so uh, over to the challenge phase. So uh, the medical pod flips face down. Uh, there are no mission counts. We haven't won or lost. We flip the challenge card and resolve it. So it's uh, borders. Uh, try to reduce general oxygen by six. I think we're okay on oxygen on this one though. Uh, try to reduce morale of all crew with personal oxygen zero by two. So uh, the pilot's already on zero. Uh, the radio officer's got a point of oxygen, so he's all good. Generalist loses two morale. The first officer's got oxygen, and the engineer's already on zero morale, so he can't get any sadder. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh... it appears that somebody is on the ship sneaking around, reducing our venting our oxygen to space. So we are activating two missions in this case. One is search pattern. Uh, which is all crew in different locations. The reward is one challenge card. And the other is emergency oxygen protocol, which is all crew personal oxygen one plus uh, may increase general oxygen by six. Um, emergency oxygen protocol, really, we don't need oxygen. We've only got three cards and we've got more than enough oxygen to last. Yeah. The search pattern would be handy because one more card would mean that we've only got two turns to get through rather than three but it would mean the engineer um, would have an issue uh, if we couldn't get his morale up so how do we want to vote for these two missions um... if we vote a mission down remember we all lose uh, a pip of morale Take both. <laughs> I think it could be both. What do both? <laughs> yeah, the problem is we can't get everyone with uh, a personal oxygen in. Maybe we could do it in two turns, but we couldn't then. Yeah, go on and get well, we can reject that. One, two, three, four. I would still have enough oxygen to last us the next few cards. Yeah, we we we've got tons of oxygen. Um, the thing is, if we vote down emergency oxygen, we would lose a point of morale for voting it down, which means that we definitely wouldn't be able to do search pattern, because oh. if everyone's in separate locations oh, okay. with their morale, they'll all... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, we could but, reject both. Well, we could... We, it boils down to, we even need to reject them both or accept them both, because if we accept them yeah. both and complete search pattern, we'll win the game before emergency oxygen protocol fails out. I think we, in order, we go for in order to in order to do search pattern we would need to get the engineer's morale up um yeah. which would require us to get the move to the location of a higher ranked officer and increase their morale yeah somebody who's going before the engineer and then have the engineer move off of that person's location we'll get the engineer to the it, it's it's a, well everyone has to be in separate locations so the rec room wouldn't do anything oh, yeah, well, we literally need somebody to move in so the radio officer or the generalist could move in actually the generalist couldn't because he's outside the ship we would need me to get moved to the location of high ranked officer the radio officer to come in salute the gen the engineer make the engineer make him feel good about himself yeah. and then have the engineer move off of the location of the radio officer that'd be the only way we could achieve that mission without someone dying okay We'll try and that, right? let's do it. Let's just do both. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful confidence. So I think the yeah. And that's um, meant to be pilot. eleven, but I don't have an eleven token. So. E e yeah, I know. Sorry, that is my fault. Uh, yeah, either way, no well, I think if 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 the um if the uh, eleven and the seventeen go for the first mission and the the fifteen can go for the other, yeah. that's more than enough to outrank yeah. all remaining voters. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so I think I think I think we're gonna win the game overall. It, the question is if every player manages to win the game rather than just somebody. 
Okay, I've got must move to location of any higher rank crew may increase their morale by one. Amazing. So the radio officer is going to move into the uh, airlock and increase the morale of the engineer by one. So we don't want to move the engine. Well, we want to move the engineer in one space away, right? You want everybody to be in a separate location from everybody okay. else. So it's your job now to get your botanist and your engineer into two sep oh, two empty okay. two yeah. two of these four empty locations, one okay. each. As long as you can do that, so, uh, we okay. should be all good. Where's the oh, okay. the generalist is outside. Oh damn! Uh, I was gonna uh, I was gonna move the I get to go first, so I was gonna move the generalist into the airlock. Yeah, but then the the radio officer has to move into the location of the engineer to increase his morale, which is currently the airlock. But there's four spaces there, so there should be enough room. Yeah, the issue is the issue is that the search pattern is everybody being in different locations. But we we could do the. Um, uh, yeah. What we could do is if someone can get to the module, we can use, we use crew actions before checking if mission succeed. If someone can get to the command module, they can use that to move a crew to an adjacent location, and they could. I, use can, get the I, can, I can get the botanist. But you can't there. get well. You can't get the generalist there because he's outside the ship. The generalist the can only go to the airlock. I can get the botanist there. I okay. could get the first officer there because I've got um, must move to any module. May flip one challenge card. Yeah, I've got the uh, may move to any non array location and then I've got another one which is may move someone to the rec room so I can come for the rec room and a module to get them to the I, so we we can do this then yeah. we, we we should be all good yeah uh so the pilot's going to stay where he is so I'll just yeah. assign that okay so everyone knows what they're doing yes yes okay <laughs> adam so I was going to move the first officer to the command module was it uh, yep, and flip a challenge card. Up. And then the uh, generalist has got to come inside, otherwise he's going to run out of air. Exactly, brilliant. So you just discard those cards. The pilot's going to stay where he is. Mm -hmm. The radio officer is going to move to the location of the engineer and increase the engineer's morale by one. Cool. Use that card. Okay. And then I'm going, to, and then I'm going to move the engineer uh, to uh, the rec room, and then I may move any, uh, well, ever crew not in an array with rank response to rec rooms. So, but yeah. Don't so you to. don't, you don't really want to do that. I'll just take this guy. Move it there. Yep. And, then, and just the other card is move to any non-array location. Yeah. And then Brilliant. the botanist can just go to the other module. module. Fantastic. They like absolute clockwork. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so there's no uh, active. Well, it, it, there is. The pilot gets a point of morale because that's how he rolls. No one with morale zero on their own. Reduce oxygen by six. Form crew actions. So in this case, the relevant crew action is the first officer is going to order one of these two guys in the airlock into the central corridor. Okay, who's who's going in? It doesn't. It's up to you. You're the one doing the ordering. Mm. There you go. Nice and decisive as a as, as a lead officer should be. <laughs> uh, the generalist doesn't have a great deal to do. The pilot doesn't have a great deal to do. Nor does the radio officer. Uh, the engineer is all good. The botanist can pointlessly murder somebody. I I, I shouldn't advise it, but you know. <laughs> um, so uh, missions fail. No missions fail. Missions succeed. Yes, search pan succeeds because everybody's in a separate location. So the reward for that is to flip a challenge card. Uh, people get their rank tokens back. Uh, so, no pods without a raise. Uh, the mission count goes down to yeah. one on emergency oxygen protocol. Flip and resolve the next challenge card. 
Generate oxygen. Try to reduce general oxygen by living crew. So in this case, that's six. Activate mission two, which is already active. And then we've got one last activation phase. Uh, because you check to see if you win uh, before you resolve the challenge card. Okay, cool. So we've got one last phase. So long as everyone doesn't die during literally this movement phase, we're all fine. <laughs> there should be no sane way that we can all die. The engineer's uh, morale was fine, wasn't it, in the end? Yeah, because I bumped yeah, it up by yeah. having the radio officer go and salute him. So basically, everyone could just stay still yeah. and we should win. We're just okay? staying where we are. Literally, we've, 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 we've all, in this particular case, we've already won. Uh, okay. Technically, there's one last turn. Okay. Um, so, uh, my guy is going to say so. The only way we could lose the game is if in the last crew actions phase, somebody decides to start shutting down locations and killing people. <laughs> and we'd be the literal only way we could win, lose. Yeah. So, that's yeah, obviously that's not going to happen, so we're definitely going to win. Yeah, it's fine. I'm just going to do a little bit of movement. Not too much, just a little bit. But it's not really going to do too much. <laughs> So, Adam, are you moving anybody? Nope, right, they're going to stay exactly where they are. Okay. Yep, my guy's going to stay sure. where they are. I was just going to move the engineer because he could just go back into the airlock and get an oxygen free. Well, you know, may as well showboat at this point. He's just Why going not? over there, getting an oxygen free. He's like, haha, yep. I've got my own oxygen. <laughs> um, and then, I've got my own morale and my own oxygen. Yeah, yeah. Now. <laughs> and, the, and then the other one is just going, he's just moving into the, the botanist is moving into the rec room and he's just dragging okay. the first officer with him. Why not? We could both be having some game of pool showdown. Fine and splendid. Uh, so reduce oxygen supplies by six. Crew actions, no any point uh, doing any. Uh, mission neither fails nor succeeds. The mission count does technically go down by one. Then, uh, if there are zero challenge cards remaining, everyone wins. If there are zero challenge cards remaining, everyone wins. Yay! Yay! There you go. That's that's uh, that, that's a game of SSO. Amazing. Wow. So, that was a lot of fun. We did well there. Yeah. Well, it was it was it was back. In, there was a point early on where I thought. This is absolutely, we're going to crush it. This is ridiculous. And then there was a point where I sort of thought, oh, right, okay, it's all it's all gone down the pan. We're in serious trouble. Yeah. I mean, obviously, in the end, the ship, you know, is, has about... been fairly uh, gutted yeah. by, um, we by, did, we by, uh, by the attack. Okay. And we did, we did lose a crew member, yes. The, the psychiatrist. So. <laughs> what I really like about this game is um, it's so thematic. Like, it really does feel like you're in a kind of disaster sci-fi movie because yeah. the fact that you've got these these kind of like uh missions coming up and you're like oh no we need to rearrange the solar arrays and then the one person we sent out to do it the next turn gets taken out by like, it's, um, it's, it's, I mean, it's it's i mean it's obviously it's emergent because obviously the cards come out the challenge deck comes out in a random order yeah. But the, the number of times, like particularly in the AI deck, the number of times that you get the check solar arrays mission and then while you're outside of the solar arrays, the computer shuts down the airlock while you're out there. Oh. And it's purely it's purely chance, but it <laughs> it feels like it happens every single time. The computer keeps luring you out by turning off the it's solar like, oh, array. Yeah. And, as, and then as soon as you're out there, the airlock goes down. Oh. Or it, as everybody's in the airlock about to go out, it gets shut down. It's so. like a sentient AI that just wants to eliminate you from the from the ship oh that was sso the rage of montalbano oh, that was a very very exciting adventure i really enjoyed yeah. that game that was really really fun <laughs> what would you say are uh, the two best things about that will the thematics um and the uh, and I, I love the mechanics of the game as well both of those like theme really well when you have a good theme with a good set of mechanics that make you feel like you're moving around a ship you're doing things interacting with crew members or just interacting with the rooms themselves it ends up with that uh, kind of very much a feel of a very space base-esque environment i liked also the fact we were having to interact with missions but all 
but I'm just sort of rambling on all the different bits because it was such a good game. <laughs> so we'll start from the beginning, shall we? <laughs> yeah, well, I, main, I agree with you. The main thing for me was uh, the thematic nature of it. Mm. It's it's such when you get it out, it's such a minimalistic looking experience. Yeah. Like what the cards themselves, when you draw out the challenge yeah. cards, you don't really have any artwork on them, but it's really thematic, even yeah. though you don't have like you know all this deluxe yeah. kind of. Uh, Kind of, I'm thinking of life yeah. form where so, you yeah. you know you have like some really interesting artwork exactly. and stuff. Um, but yeah, you, this is yes. just tap on cards yeah. and it is and a couple so of perfect. like just meeples. That's all you need. And how I felt with if we just started by going through each of the things we sort of liked in terms of like theming, we I, I think the the theming of the entire game itself. You don't need like all this fancy artwork the the fact of just simply moving a character from one place to another and doing a simple action such as oh make someone do a task you could make this person into like a super lazy guy that's just telling this person what to do and just have your own image of what the character's kind of like and just you can kind of then create it into like a mini role playing experience as you're playing through the game and developing and understanding who these characters are. And as you get to grips of like liking these characters or hating them because they're making other people do stuff or they're actually just uh, sitting or, or they're just helping other people out and saving the day, kind of like what our, uh, what, our, what the radio uh, engineer did and uh, or the psychiatrist just uh, just casually just helping people out and going and saving the day, but ends up getting tragically killed in the process. You sort of feel for those characters, even though you don't really know too much about them. You still like feel for those characters. You're like, oh no, he's gone off into space. The thing is, like when you sit down and you play a board game of anything, mm. um, one of the the nicest experiences when there's like, especially a thematic game where yeah. you go away with a story, yes. like a joint experience where you're all like, Oh, remember that time? Yeah. And like throughout the game, the best thing was that psychiatrist exactly. game. Yeah. Because it was like, although <laughs> what we said it's very minimal thick, there's some art on some of the cards. Yeah. Um, it was just so immersive. Like you could just imagine the psychiatrist game there, she's yeah. getting ready or he getting yeah. ready to put them and they're, they're there and then suddenly they're kind of looking up. It's just like meteorite. <laughs> it's just out of the blue, no reason at all. It's just like oh. uh, kind of like gravity, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, so theme for me, uh, number one is theme on this, and I agree with you. Well, the mechanics of this—they're mm -hmm. so simple, mm -hmm. um, just really easy to kind of understand yeah. and follow. Like you get a few rounds going, like just to get to grips with it. But once you got to grips with the basics, it's simply just move and do what it says on the room. And then as you're doing that, it's just it, it it adds a bit of depth to it as you're wanting to get into the right room to do the right action at the right time. And the mechanic of having, say, your players have all the characters have like a different ranking order as well. So as one player dies, another player takes order. So another player might end up being the first player around, which then ruins an entire plan because the one key character that's meant to lead everyone in the right order and get everyone into the right place yeah. can disrupt that. So it ends up yeah. becoming like um, a bit of chaos as more and more people disappear. You're sort of like having to try and fill in the gaps as quickly as possible before so you can do things in the right order at the right time to get people not so as people can survive around to then do what they need to do for the following future rounds um, what would um, you say are some negative things about this um uh, i can see like i, I suppose in uh, i suppose just for uh, looking at it as from our game as a as our single game like i felt like we we were quite lucky i think in the fact that we got like an ability that let us just get rid of all the cards from the entire uh deck but uh, and then managed to make us win the game sort of a bit quicker towards the end because we were able to just get rid of all the cards of the deck but if we didn't have him um i feel like having the people just wake up and you're having to then sort out this other per uh, this new character that comes back in it could be a bit frustrating like having to try and get the morale up and try and force that out you could see some frustrations of like oh it's ruined that bit but it's kind of add but then again like every each bit adds to the theme in a different in a different way it could be a frustrating bit and an annoyance to the game but i i i can't uh, other than like i don't know i can't i can't think of a decent bad think... point <laughs> like I, I could sort of see like mini and nuances about it like but you don't need it doesn't need like a huge 
much more. Like, it's the fact that it can grow, the fact it's got all this extra. I think it's a very well made game. Yeah, from from my side, the only negative that I can think about is some of the um, some of the wording on the cards can be a bit misleading. Like, oh, okay, uh, for yeah. instance, the cards might say "must" on them. And oh, if okay. you aren't familiar with the game, yeah. if you were trying to learn this, like when I first started to learn this, yeah. um, some of the cards that said you must do this yeah. on a particular thing, it made me think, oh, well, I always have to do yeah. this. So well, I, then, there's, well, then there's the thing, we, we haven't had a proper look at what we did uh, during that game. We didn't really have a proper look at what the rule book was like. There was the little one at the top, but I never pretty much flicked through it. But there, if there's you. like a little... Uh, like you, you'll see it when obviously you go through it for your when you want to, when you're doing your solo. But uh, the, the the there possibly is like a glossary of all the terms in there that will probably just describe that to you. So if there's something like that yeah. there, it's not so much that. Well, it's more the fact that like one of the characters had a must, and you then you had to do a particular thing. Oh, okay, yeah. It kind of feels like oh, you always have to do this because it says must. Oh but yes. Down to like interpretation of the cards yeah. like when, okay i get you on that so, like, so i think there is the chance that some people could misinterpret some of yeah, the, the cards yeah. but generally i think it's um probably for it's the first couple people. of playthroughs but once you get play it like a couple of times and you'll probably get to grips yeah. with those rules themselves um and yeah i think also just a rebuttal what you said about a new person coming out i think sometimes that might be a it could like you said it could be very frustrating coming out at the same time you might get a character whose special ability uh, is exactly what you need. Yes, um, that's very but true. Yeah, but you've got to make them happy enough in that round, otherwise they're just going to die because they're unhappy with themselves. They're like, oh, I don't want to get up. Right, I'm going to just jump out. the, <laughs> Just get out of the ship. They're like, they wake up and they're like, well, if I'm here, that means someone's not. Oh. What happened to them? Where's the <laughs> Uh, it just floats by the window as they get up. Uh, so, um, as we always do when we're talking about um, games, this is a game you can actually get at the moment. Yeah. Also, it's on Kickstarter, which is always exciting and a yeah. very low. Well, I would definitely check yes. this out. Um, as a returning backer, just to get the uh, the new expansion, it's going to cost me, I think, four pounds, wow. which is crazy, just, crazy, crazy. Right? It's a great, great value for money in this game. Right. Um, so. Will, would you um, buy this? Would you play this? Or would you avoid this? I would definitely buy this game. It's something I can see bringing to the table, something simple enough that I can just teach anyone coming over just to play a round or two. And it would just be something that I can just fit on a shelf quite easily. It's quite compact with what they've got in the box with it. Um, and, uh, I've, I've, and for the price itself, it's like it's not much out your pocket for a game that probably would be something along I, I could see this be costing a lot more than what they're putting on for it for the, the quality of the game itself um, so I would definitely want it on my sh uh, shelf <laughs> so I'll be uh, definitely backing this and buying this <laughs> and uh, for me it's a buy I mean already did mm. um, and uh, yeah it's just it's just such good value for money it's such so compact it's minimalistic mm. but not in a bad way yeah um and like the thing is like uh like i said this is it's very modular so you yeah. can keep adding extra bits to this um and also like the idea of having like a yeah. legacy version at some point that sounds like that could yeah. be pretty exciting well, you could also have like fun fun uh little house like, hidden house rules and everyone could be like if you're doing it it's like a role-playing themed thing and you could have different uh uh cards set out with different roles and someone's could be like a hidden traitor on the ship and then their for their their main goal is to force people into rooms and get it's, as many people it's, 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 <laughs> but yeah. it could be a secondary thing that you can do on top of it if you if you really wanted to it's not it's, you know it doesn't have to be a serious thing but it's something you could just have fun with and just uh create your own little stories with it <laughs> after playing that particular scenario i've not played rage of montevano mm. yet yeah. um would you would you be interested in trying the other scenarios out oh i'd definitely be interested in trying the other ones out i really like the sound of the alien scenario as well that's going to be that'll be quite interesting <laughs> like everyone just suddenly turns into an alien the parasite <laughs> one like yeah. the thing yeah well okay well thank you uh for your thoughts well thank you for joining me this evening no problem always. Um, and thank you, the people at home who uh, support us by watching this rabbit on about nonsense uh, <laughs> or, or, or getting through uh, gameplays uh, like that. So, um, yeah, thank you for watching. Yeah. You can find us on various different social medias. Will? Oh, uh, yeah, you can find us on YouTube, 
Instagram. You might find us on Twitter. Not really, but you can find Adam if you search hard enough. Uh, you'll find us on uh, Facebook. And then you'll also find us on... You won't, you, might, you won't find us on TikTok. We tried that one time, but it, it didn't work out. Yeah. And we never speak of it again. Um, and yeah, so... Uh, but make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. We always like seeing uh, your comments and saying, "Oh, how badly we got the rules wrong." Or because <laughs> you had the actual design. We did, design. we did, we did. We well, if they could play it anyway, we could just send <laughs> someone else's way. <laughs> but um, make sure yeah, you like, comment, subscribe, and uh, make and make sure to ding that bell. And most importantly, that you stay safe and keep rolling.